Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we're going to go shoot some pool. But first, I am going to show you how to build an HO scale pool hall. It's a kit from Casey's workshop called Skies Billiards. Let's head over to the workbench and get started on it. So here is the box that the uh, kit comes in. Comes with a uh, very nice instructions, full color photographs. And then it even has a page that shows you the finished model. And we have a template for all of our bracing and all of our parts. The first step is bracing the back of the walls. And thinking ahead, there will be a, a roof that gets put in here. Now we want the roof to not sit flat we want it to sit down, sunk down in to the walls a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll take our pencil and using one of the 1 8 inch strips of wood for bracing, we're just going to draw a line across the top of the walls. because we don't want our bracing to go any higher than that. That way, when we put our roof card on there, it'll sit right on top of these pieces. Okay, now that that's done, we'll uh, follow the template instructions and put all of our bracing on. So I braced all of my walls and put weights on them and let them dry. The next step will be painting the brick. I did have a little bit of extra bracing so I did put a couple of extra pieces on it that weren't required, but just to uh, be extra cautious, I added some more. And I wanted to show you that I stayed right below the pencil line so that our roof card can sit right on top of there. So the colors I'm using for the brick, um, let's see. I am using a just brick red, burnt sienna, raw sienna, and antique gold. So I've got my sponge and we're just going to dab on all the different colors. You don't want to go too heavy because you don't want the paint to fill in uh, the cracks. We're going to put some joint compound. We'll smear joint compound on there to uh, fill in all the mortar. Okay, now we'll take, just kind of dab that off, clean it a little bit. A 
We'll go to our next color, Burnt Sienna. Dab that off again. Go to Raw Sienna. Now if you want to go with a darker brick red, uh, that's fine. You definitely just go with whatever colors that um, you're used to or what you see, like where you live in your area. You can mix your colors. You can see I'm just dabbing it in both the raw sienna and burnt sienna. Okay, now we'll do a little bit of the antique gold. I'm going to mix that with the brick red. Gives it kind of an orange color. So just keep playing around with it until you get it to a point that you're happy with it. It's probably hard to tell on camera all the different values that are on it. I'll hold this up to the camera so that you can see what it looks like. So as you can see, there's a lot of different values in it. Now we'll take a small brush and we'll use burnt umber and paint some individual bricks. So I'm going to be using a very small brush and we're just going to use um, some burnt umber to start with but we can definitely go in and do some of these colors also I have another video on my YouTube channel that is all about painting brick walls so you may want to check that out this is a little time consuming but um, I think it looks really neat when it's all done adds a lot of detail to it And you don't have to do a lot. Just do a little bit here and there. And then like I said, if you want to do some of the other colors, you can. And we'll even do Maybe some that are just the straight antique gold. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, because after this all dries, the next step will be to put in joint compound. And smear it into all of the cracks. And uh, that will just tie everything together. Hopefully you can see that good. Okay, I'll go ahead and do the rest of the walls. 
and then we'll move on to the next stage. So now I am sponging uh, an orange. Um, it's actually called tangerine. And I'm very lightly sponging it over the walls. So you can see these three are done. And this is the last one. Okay. I'll show you one up close. So next, we are going to use joint compound. And I have never done this before, but I'm going to mix slate gray I'm gonna mix slate gray in with it Like I said, I've never done this before, so we'll see how this turns out. I'm using a little, I was going to use a lighter gray, but I think with the white of the joint compound mixed with this, it will lighten it. Yeah, it's definitely, that's a very, I like that gray. Okay, so we're going to want to grab a paper towel. Now we're going to want to do this very quick because of the acrylic paint. Um, it'll dry and we don't want it drying on the face of the, the brick. Okay, like I said, we're going to have to work pretty fast. I'm just getting my paper towel a little damp. Well, as you can see, it definitely lightens the wall. So the walls are all done. Um, I really like the gray mortar. I think it gives it even more of an aged old brick look. I don't know if you're able to see it well or not. Um, before we move on to our windows I want to add some pastel chalk powder to it so I'm using a uh, kind of a reddish orange and an orange and we'll just start at the bottom and kind of brush it up Maybe some running down from the windows. Again, I like to model um, with an older, an older look, a little more beat up, really aged. Um, if you want this to look newer, a little more modern, you'll probably just want to go with a a red brick color and 
the white joint compound and not even do the pastel chalks on it and it will definitely look a lot newer and then we'll go in with some darker a dark brown just towards the bottom So we have some stonework on the corner of the building and then all of these that go above and below the window. So I mixed up a stone color and I used desert sand and slate gray and I probably did 50-50. And you don't want to go too thick because you don't want to fill in the lines of all the individual stones. So this is where we're at so far. And I did have to take a brush and let me show you quick. I had to paint the inside of the um, the windows. Now I painted these gray and also the area right under it gray but I know in the instructions um, those match the brick uh, which looks really nice too it gives it a, a really nice old look I love the way that the owner uh, Kenny Crump put this model together yeah, it looks really nice so I'm trying to make it look just a little bit different than his. Just to show you that um, there's some options with it. Next, I will start to paint the windows um, green and we'll get those put in. I also wanted to mention that um, don't worry if you do mess up on installing these because you do have four extra that you can use. Um, I recommend using a brand new sharp X-Acto blade when when cutting these because um, they are a little bit fragile especially the the um, the oval or curved ones. The kit comes with a lot of signs. Um, I used some of my own signs for it so I just wanted to show you quick So real quick, I wanted to show you that I did some more weathering um, towards the bottom and along the, the uh, stone. So all I did for all of this weathering was I used wrought iron and a lot of water and created a thin wash that I just sort of streaked down the wall and next to the stone. So as you can see I've gotten quite a bit done. I spent actually a very long time on the front of the model so I made some changes um, 
On both sides of the door, you'll notice there are windows. Um, on the original model, uh, there are no windows. And I simply just took my knife and cut those two openings. Um, then you can see, too, where it goes straight across and then steps down. And I changed it and made it go straight across. And then I really liked the design of the lines going down in the front. So I just simply added that in uh, the two little sections in there. And then there is a thin strip that I added across the top so that it matches uh, this side. And that was simply done with the extra material from the um, oh, all, all of this stuff on the front. Um, I just used, cut some extra pieces and added them. Same with the extra trim under here. That's all just cut from uh, the material in the kit. And then the post, uh, the, the two posts here, there's a center post that matches it. That comes down and you can see that here okay so next I'm going to move on to doing the windows as I'm cutting out all of the windows um, I think a very good tip is to not throw away your piece after you have the windows cut out because you can use this later for trim. Uh, if on a different structure you wanted to add little uh, window cells or uh, some little trim around a door, um, this is just great material and it's peel and stick. So all you have to do is peel the back off and stick it onto whatever you're modeling. So I have all the windows cut out, and again, do not throw this away. Save it for uh, another kit to add some trim. Okay, now I will assemble all the windows, cut my clear acetate to put on the back of them, and then cut some little mini uh, blinds to put in there, and then install them in the model. Well, after quite a bit of work, I finally got all of the windows done. I highly recommend using a brand new sharp X-Acto knife when you go to do your windows. Take your time. The windows are very delicate. Uh, you have to cut out each window, the window pane. Uh, each little part of it has to be cut out. So it does take a while. So just be patient and be sure that you use a, a brand new exacto uh, knife. And I did... It comes with a pretty big sheet of black paper. So I just cut one um, as a divider so that the light doesn't shine all the way through to the other side. So, and you still have plenty left over for uh, the tar paper on the roof if you choose to do that. So I spray painted the um, black construction paper 
with a gray primer and I didn't spray it evenly. I went heavier in some areas and lighter in others so that when I cut it into strips, uh, it gave me a little variation in it. I then painted the inside edge um, a flat black. Now I'm just going to take a Sharpie pen. It's a medium. And I'm going to go over the cracks. This will represent tar. You can put little spots on it. Uh, they dripped or went off a little bit on it just to give it t some variety. Now we will take our pastels and do a little bit of weathering on it. We can even use some black. And we'll add some details, some maybe a smokestack on there. And then it also gets a cap around the edge that comes with the kit. And then we have our decorative piece that we have to cut to length and glue on the front. So for the top edge of the building, the kit comes with these, this really nice trimming. So I'll probably paint these uh, gray a little darker maybe than the stone on the side and then put those around just the two sides and the back and then like I said the front will get this piece uh, put on there okay so the uh, cap is on the edge so our model is complete As you can see, I um, glued on a corner post. The kit comes with three. So there's one on this corner, one on this corner, and then one in the center. You can see I added the sign. I actually glued the sign to a thin piece of cardboard and then put a wood frame around it and painted it green to match the, the trim on the bottom. I will probably add some roof details a little smokestack, maybe I might even build an entrance for the top. I also wanted to mention I'm going to add, um, I don't have any on hand, but I'm going to add a drain pipe down the back side um, just to cover up the the seam there so 
So I'll add a drain pipe there. And then you could always add um, some ivy growing up on the corners if you want to. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to check out kcworkshop.com. They sell both HO scale and O scale kits and detail parts. Every kit that you build comes with its own challenges. So keep that in mind when ordering kits from any manufacturer. They're all going to be put together differently. So be sure to read the instructions thoroughly. Uh, don't assume that they're all going to go together the same way because um, they're all different and that's what keeps it exciting. On a side note, I would love to see what everyone is working on. Be sure to share your work with me on my Facebook page at Jason Jensen Trains. Uh, I'd love to see uh, what everyone's modeling. Well, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And until next time, happy modeling, everyone.